All right, let's talk about itemization with update 55. Uh, so this, uh, I think, came from Linobo. Uh, there's a lot of itemization in any expansion, and this one containing a level jump means there's a lot of moving parts. So there's a little bit of disjointedness, which, which was apologized for. So Isle of Dread will contain two major groups of items. Pirate-themed standalone items and dinosaur bone crafted items. Generally speaking, the pirate stuff will be whole items dropped in dungeons, and dino stuff you'll need to craft and craft upon. This expansion will also contain new augments, new sentient artifacts, and raid loot, none of which are available in the preview. Item power levels. Uh, the items will follow the crystal co or the crystal co Kenneth crafting ECCs. Uh, follow the Kenneth Crafting curve. Kenneth Crafting will also be adjusted so players can craft level 31 and 32 shards again. This will use existing shard ingredients, so if you had some crafted before, you'll be able to add them now. Uh, yes, this means that Kenneth Crafting level 32 will have higher levels than level 31 quest items from Isle of Dread. As an item's minimum level increases, its power level also increases. So basically all this stuff's on the same power curve. That's not surprising since they that's what they one of the big things they did with the re itemization, right? Is put everything on the same curve. I've got a question. Uh huh. So way back when Kenneth Crafting lets you craft up to level thirty four items, um, I have a crafter that was able to craft those level thirty four yeah. items. Will I still be able to craft level thirty one and thirty two items or do I need to now uh, you know get my crafting levels up again? I have not seen anything that indicates that the Kenneth Crafting XP curve is changing in any way, shape, or form. So I believe you will be able to do that normally. Okay. That is a good point. Um, you know, by the time we get up to level 40, we might see Kenneth Crafting like oh, XP open up. Right? There might be some new levels in Kenneth Crafting. That seems like that would be appropriate. Um, I believe though, so, um, I'm not a huge Kenneth crafter, but I thought the minimum level 30 effective level 34 shards were a higher level than 33, 32, 31, and 30. So I, I assume that we're going to follow that same level progression curve. So by the time we get to level 35, we might need to get higher Kenneth crafting levels. Um, okay. That would be my guess. Uh, and that would make uh, sense. Yeah. But. We'll have to see. That's a good point, though. Yeah. Uh, raid items and minor artifacts will continue to get a boost in their effective power level. This means that raid loot at level 31 will be better than crafted loot at level 32, and minor artifacts being better than raid loot. No surprise there, other than I have a quite Are minor artifacts really better than raid loot <laughs> well they have more slots so they have three slots okay um, so that's oh that's sure good. like the augment slots yeah okay i'll yeah. buy that you can only wear one i guess that would yeah, yeah so there, yeah i just kind of saw that i was like are minor artifacts really that much better than raid loot um and like so i looked at a lot of those minor art artifacts and they're not always that great well the minor artifacts get you at, at you know when they first came out they were able to get you to like you know charisma 14 plus 14 as opposed to charisma plus 13 and sure. and you know the the, the raid items so they were better but not a whole lot better yeah. uh pirate stuff these items will drop fully realized in dungeons it means they'll have a name a theme effects and a specific appearance very much standard name loot here uh the goal with these items is one brand new uh affix per item which they know for a fact they won't get to finish but it's good to have goals yeah stretch goals are good there will be five main sets in Isle of Dread and one overall set. Think like Ravenloft here. Goal of these sets is to provide meaningful alternatives to Sharn and Ravenloft three-piece sets. Each three-piece set will contain an armor or docent, a helmet, and a cloak. This is partially because that this way they can match art assets together. There's also a larger set like the Adherent of Mist set in Ravenloft. Anything else not in the five main, main sets will be here. Uh... In Legendary, each pirate item will also have one don dinosaur bone augment slot, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so, 
five sets. Uh, I assume we're going to see similar sets to... I mean, Ravenloft only had three. Uh, Feywild had four, but Feywild was doing some some different things that I actually really liked with their set uh, bonuses. Uh, but it looks like we're going to get more of the... So we'll have the like an inherent myth set plus a five five different set pieces, uh, which I kind of imagine is going to be more along the Sharn style of, of set pieces, right? So probably have some sort of melee DPS, range DPS, uh, Divine Caster, Arcane Caster, uh, what am I missing? DC Caster? Well, I guess there's that. Oh, we'll probably have some sort of combination thereof. Um, it does sound... Now, the set bonuses weren't available to preview, but the line that they're going to provide meaningful alternative to Sharn and Ravenloft makes me think that we may not see much of a bump in those set bonuses. Just kind right. of right. So you know, there, so there's going to be level thirty one. You know, so it's it's how much better can they be? Yeah, I'm just thinking like the. It sounds like the set bonuses aren't going to be super high. Well, it will still be like you know thinking. three. Three, three sneak dice, and you know, possibly you know, thirty PRR, you know, artifact PRR bonus type thing. You know, it may maybe they bump it up to like thirty-two or something like that. So it's yeah, it be... we might see something like that. But um... one thing that that kind of disappointed me was that uh, all these sets in the in the Isle of Dread stuff is going to include an armor slot. So so essentially, it, it you, they hose you from sets if you wanted to try to combine a set from. Uh, well, that's like, intentional. You know, Sharn or 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 you know one of the other one of the other packs. So you know I I understand why they're doing it, right? Because they didn't want to have like you know somebody wearing three different sets with you know all these really cool you know bonuses you know and maybe a little bit OP. I understand why they're doing it. It's still disappointing nonetheless. Yeah, I think that's kind of always going to be the case, right? Like you don't want to let people have multiple S tier sets on yeah. so you limit it by having by controlling the s piece which is something that i fought for a lot of time if you remember for being able to get those sets in ravenloft just to be able to move to another piece of armor while you're t you know in the leveling process for tring because often time when you were tring you put your sharn gear on and you never change gear again until you put your sharn gear on and get at 29 right you just i mean i still do that. <laughs> yeah exactly that's what i'm saying so They've they've made some changes to that with the level twenty loot change. I feel like there's a yep. good window now to get gear on at level twenty. Maybe somewhere in there you'll have like a web weapon, maybe that you'll slide into at twenty three or something. So there's a little bit of gear play now. Um, there's but definitely these are just more the normal these rules. Things. These are the normal rules, right? These are the what we signed on for. There's definitely more more that uh, that in between Sharn and Legendary Sharn. Uh, to look at now. Um, I chose not really to do that. More from a standpoint of, I didn't feel like I needed much more. I didn't really need a power boost there that I wasn't getting, and I didn't really want to haul around more TR gear. <laughs> that was yeah. kind of what I did there. Of course, I avoid all of that by just staying. All my tunes are at thirty, so. Yeah. I don't have to worry about you know going through. Oh, this is my level fifteen gear, and here's my level twenty gear, etc. Yeah, I just have the one character I play, so that's fine. And just go through the loop if he needs to. Uh, I would like to see something other than just damage and playing with dice on the sets. I feel like there's a good opportunity to do something uh, just different. Um, and that you can still kind of maybe have it behind the scenes be the same thing, but have it feel and look a lot differently. Um, whether you have more uh, the same outputs, instead of it being damage multipliers on you, maybe it turns into like guard type things. So it be, like just feels different. Oh, please not guards, it's, but <laughs> I like what I you're mean, saying, but you guards. It doesn't, I, don't, I really just, I'm tired of seeing the same, all my math is slightly better. You know, everything's 2% better than it was or whatever. And I, I'm not as good as I can be because it turns out if I do this thing, I can get a plus five here and a plus five here and I can get negative plus. You know what I mean? 
Like it would be well, nice to have something that's a little bit different than just tweak the numbers. Well, just that, well, welcome to raising the level cap. I mean, that's essentially what lays, lay, raising the level cap means. I, know, to, I hate that. I hate it too, and and I really, I. Well, that's okay. I just it's, would it's like lazy. To it's lazy design. Places. It's lazy design. Game design. Um, frankly, well, they, they did say that there, there's a goal to have a lot of new affixes. So, yeah, well, you yeah. could do that, Pat PJ. You could do that without having raised the level cap and increasing the um the the you know, the, the stuff on on uh, you know the, the you know the, the the extra damage or the extra PRR or whatever. Look, I've I don't know what exactly has happened to me in the last few months, but like I've I'm turning over this leaf. They've decided they're going to raise the level cap. I'm just going to move it. I'm just because if it was me, the level cap would be like twenty four probably right now. Because we'd be going a little bit slower and be having a lot more, I would focus like on a few other areas. I think personally, but it's fine. We're raising the level cap. We're just going to get on board, and we're just going to figure out how to make it the best we can. Well, what choice do we have, right? Oh, I mean, right now it looks like raising levels sells packs, so we'll get on board. But when it comes to levels and items, like I, I really feel like we can explore different spaces when it comes to our items now, especially in a limited situation where we're talking about like cool dino shit. Do cool dino shit. You know what I mean? Like, hold that thought. We're getting to the dino stuff. Okay. Um, augments. Uh, there are going to be level thirty-two augments being added to global treasure tables. A uh, subsection of those will be available for trade with Randall Lyric for Isle of Dread ingredients. Uh, he will also have level 8 augments for ingredients, uh, which is going to be the heroic level. There will also be new named augments of Isle of Dread that drop as treasure, uh, which will be minimum level 30. Uh, not in the previous. As opposed to 28, level. right? Yeah. Well, I mean, they're just telling us that the minimum level 30. There are actually minimum level 30 augments in the game already uh, that I believe act. Mm, do they drop as minimum level 30? I don't think they do. I think they're level. The one in the raids, right? Like they they drop. There's some that are thirty, right? But those are like the the soul forge ones, right? Like they're not, um, like the the crafted ones from the raid items. They're not like just dropping in game as level thirty. I don't think. Oh, uh, that might be that might be true. Um, but we're gonna get some level thirty named augments. I think that's always fun. I like seeing, uh, new augments. Artifacts. Uh, artifacts in this contact pack will be level 30 and have four max filigree slots, which means if you haven't already found a perfect a perfected artifact, you'll still be able to use a variety of alternatives. So that sounds great. Like that. Uh, dino crafting. Uh, as you explore the Isle of Dread, you'll collect Isle of Dread ingredients, such as fossilized dinosaur teeth. You can use these to craft Isle of Dread augments. These augments will only go into Isle of Dread augment slots. There are five main types of uh, augments, fang, scale, horn, teeth, and set bonus. They acknowledge the last one is a little meta, but it really is just a set bonus slot. Fair enough. Blanks consist of all weapon types, all shield types, helmets, cloaks, and all armor types, including docent. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, a spreadsheet for how they uh, this is going to play out. Uh, so armor is going to have... Uh, uh, scale, fang, claw, uh, horn, uh, and set bonus. Uh, and it looks like they're actually also, these are going to be color-coded. I assume that's going to be similar to uh, existing augment color information. Um, so if you see seeing things that are kind of usually in, on these types of things, that's what's going to happen here. Um, so armor is going to have red, orange, green, uh, blue, and then the set bonus. Uh, shields, uh, scale thing, scale, or for both weapon and armor. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, accessories. So it looks like there's like weapon versions of each of these slots and non and armor versions of some of them and just basic versions of the other ones. A little yep. Bit confusing. Uh, the slot, the set bonus slot allows you to put them, the item into one of the Isle of Dread set bonuses. This means you can theoretically have that set bonus with all three of your items being dino, dino bone crafted or none if you just do, use standalone items. Um, so maybe we can get around the armor limitation. Not entirely sure here, but kind of sounds like it's going on. 
Um, augments will clearly state which version of the slot they're in. For example, this means that yes, there are three types of scale slot, uh, armor, weapon, and regular. But the denotation will appear in the augment slots display and the description to help prevent confusion. I, okay, cool. But why not just have more names? Instead of having like three types of scale, just have like different things like scale, feather, hide, or something like that. Doesn't that seem less confusing? Is that just me? No, no. I, I, you're exactly right. Yeah. Uh, to craft augments, uh, they're using slavers as kind of an analog. You turn many disparate ingredients into a standalone augment and then slot those in directly. However, unlike slavers, this will use the new augment system, so there will be both unslaughters and destroyers available. So these are not going to be permanent. So that's really cool. Yes. Uh, bonuses available are split by slot type. Uh, so they'll have different things going on with the different for scale weapon, scale armor, or bang weapon, or whatever. Uh, this crafting system only exists in Legendary. At level 7, you'll just be finding the pirate stuff. Uh, so there's the overview of the item-y stuff. Uh, I will yeah, say it, I did see um, some people were looking at the dino crafting stuff. It looks like a lot of the stuff is sim is the same as some of the shroud effects. Yes. So there's there's dust type effects and and, and you know and ooze type effects. I saw affirmation, I think. Yeah, there's affirmation. Um. So it's a little. Weird to me that, like, hey, here's level 26 things you get at level 26. Uh, but you can put them on better stuff, so that's not terrible. Um, I have to see a little bit more of the, the details and stuff. Love that you can unslot things. I think that's the big win here. That's the best, uh, that's the best part of this whole thing, is you can unslot. I did say some people uh, saying, well, if you're using the same Shroud st stuff as you can get from Shroud, that makes Shroud stuff obsolete. My response to that is, one, that's how the game works. Yes, Older exactly. It's obsolete. Um, two, you can still use Shroud stuff at level 26. Look, I get it. Like, you don't spend a whole lot. Of, it doesn't take very long to get from 26 to 30. Uh, yes, totally right. But there's still still a place that you can use it, so I don't know. I'm not buying into the Shroud stuff is now obsolete thing. No, it's not. I don't know. Things things have a life cycle. They they cycle in, they cycle out. I understand people being up, upset and frustrated to wanting to see new effects, but new effects are often hard and difficult. Right yes. to come up with them and encode, and then to make sure that they work correctly. Um, I mean, that's why we basically have two cat races in a row, right? So, like, it's it's something we have to kind of be okay with to a certain point. But again, if we can come up with cool, different things, like I don't know, a triangle that opens in the sky and tries off, try. try Rhinoceroses fall out of it and attack people for five minutes. That would be cool and different. Wouldn't be necessarily very good, but it would be cool and different. Um, and we can it can do things like I don't know. I would like to see, especially with if if possible, I would like to see things that affect the game in a different way to really change how the game is played, whether it's in the dungeons going forward or here at the item level. I think there's been a lot of really good creative input lately and in that they can really... This feels very samey to me, and I would like it to feel new and different. But uh, I understand same works, so maybe we just keep the formula and just keep going. I don't know. To, to kind of pull a, a line of thinking that you had earlier, I think we really need to keep in mind here that we're talking about effects that were only from Legendary Shroud which there's probably a bunch of new players that 
don't have anything from Legendary Shroud. Because let's face it, it's not really being run a whole lot right now. And really, I mean, some a lot of those items are already kind of outdated anyways, right? Like there's not that they're they're not competitive and, and usable, but, but I think people are not making those new I- those as new items anyways. It you know, it doesn't Patrick, it doesn't help that there's a really good online crafter that works anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I that's the one thing that's been been holding me back from getting into legendary shroud crafting. I mean, I have made uh, a, a light crossbow, you know, from for le- from right. legendary shroud crafting, but I haven't made any of the affirmation stuff. I haven't made any of the the you know, any of the debuffer things mm-hmm. um because you know it, it's it's a little intimidating to look at the the ddo wiki thing um because i'm not really sure how things work but if i had an online crafter um it would certainly be helpful sure. and you know it would take a lot of the you know a fear of ruining you know, by using the wrong uh, shroud ingredients you know yep. it would certainly help if we had if i had a, I had a good online crafter well that's just that ridiculous worked. that's just ridiculous the tools in the game should work easily enough that you can plan your thing regardless you shouldn't have to have an outside tool. yeah that's that's a bad mentality and you're beating yourself up for having that mentality over the years stop it no um no it just needs to work better in game i, I it's something that needs to happen you know you're right don't do that you're absolutely right, um, and it but it extends from the original shroud crafting. Right, it's the you same know. thing. It's the mentality that we gave ourselves from a long time ago because that was the thing that we had that we thought was nice. It's not the nice thing. We now acknowledge that it's a nice thing, and we move forward. It would be nice to have something. I agree, but that's not what we should have. There is, um, I think it's a important note too. So, kind of going back to where I was, that like this stuff should be more readily and easily available to people than. Legendary Shroud stuff. Um, and, you know, let's face it, like, I liked a lot of the Legendary Shroud stuff. Like, there were cool things in there, too, right? Like, well, it's just, it's an extremely well done, like, series of tools and effects and, mm-hmm. and the crafting system and stuff. It just needs, like, I say this a lot, and I'm not going to try to say this very often, but some polish when and it comes to the UI stuff to be able to use it a little bit better in game. There's an opportunity here. If people wish, they could take this, maybe model a slightly better UI so people can build it a little bit better. And then maybe if that system works really nicely, we can roll it backwards on things like the shroud and stuff like that. It would be really wonderful. I think yeah. I think a good UI can really make things wonderful. 